All right, Ridley, I think we're just going to have to have folks, um, I think it's working fine on uh, Twitch, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to have folks um, watch on YouTube as well, if necessary, but I'm going to hand it off to you and you should be good to go for, there are your slides and good luck on your IoT session. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Anuya. Of course. All right, I'm just going to wait for some more folks to tune in uh, until then. And...
Alrighty, we're just waiting for some more people to join in. And All right, there's someone saying let's go, but I kind of need you guys to kind of solve a quiz in the beginning and I really don't want people joining in midway. <laughs>
Alrighty, let's get started. So uh, I know it's been a little late. I think we're running almost 45 minutes or rather an hour behind the schedule. But <laughs> we're good to go. Uh, lucky for you guys, the session is going to be <laughs> nice and short so that we don't take up time for our next time later. But all right, let's get started then. Let me get it off the panel. Yes, so am I, because today we're finally going to be doing the hands-on part that I've been talking about for the past two sessions. Uh, we're going to cover a little bit of what we've done till now, and then we'll move on to the fun part. And uh, also, we have Khalid here, who's given me some pretty great ideas regarding simulation that I hope to inculcate in my curriculum soon, but I'm going to let him come on the stream if he wants to, you know, show what he's done later. Alrighty. So intros and icebreakers, we usually do this in the beginning, but I'm going to wait uh, for a couple of more people to catch up that we're not streaming on Twitch and rather streaming on YouTube. So that's okay. Uh, let's just get started. Uh, we're going to we were going to do this quiz in the beginning, but I'm just going to hold it for the time being and rather skip to the theory part and then we will we'll come back to this in a bit. So what are we going to cover today? Uh, we're going to be covering a lot of hands-on stuff. That means I'm going to be here and I'm going to help you debug. I'm going to walk you through some ways to be, get connected to Azure and I'm going to also help you set up Azure. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any any uh, obstructions in following instructions, do let me know. Uh, I'm happy to stop, help you out, and then move on. All right. So uh, we're just going to do a quick recap of all the topics that we covered. Uh, I won't dive deep. I'll just try and, you know, make sure that the dots are connected. Uh, then we'll go with the system design template that was <laughs> rather chaotic last time. Uh, I've got an image. We'll just go with the image. We'll understand where user experience, material science, and technology really comes together when you think about an entire product design. Then there's the Azure setup. It's pretty simple uh, in case you can't follow along. That's OK. Uh, I've already uh, made a repository with all the resources listed in the order that we'll be. Uh, I'll be showing them today. And I'll be sharing the entire repository before we get into the Azure setup. So even if there are further errors in the streaming, hopefully not. But in case there are, you should be very much equipped to uh, complete the entire session all by yourself. All right, so uh, let's start with the recap. We covered what's IoT, uh, not just the acronym, but also the concept. Uh, we covered what's IoT versus IoT. IoT basically what, how, how does your design thinking change as per your stake and risk that comes, you know, that gets involved the with the large scale integration that you do uh, with uh, the more industrial applications, right? So, uh, we covered some great examples regarding how when we say IoT, it's not just about accuracy or better security. It's about uh, sophistication that goes beyond the number of devices or just the risk that the device uh, pertains to that situation, right? So uh, we covered that. Then we covered components and architecture, which was basically how many blocks do you really need for a system to qualify for an iot system then we went over the architecture which was basically how all the components really you know function in what direction do they function and then we covered devices and parameters which was basically uh how do you choose what you're going to use to make a project uh, i know there are tons of tutorials out there do you just follow them if you follow them what do you expect from a person to ask you when they're trying to follow your tutorial? So let's say if you see that someone's using a, a particular system to you for surveillance, you you can after you know having understood devices and parameters, you can ask why are they using a particular device in a particular way. Then we covered embedded systems in RTOS, which is which was basically understanding how IoT is made of embedded systems, but not vice versa. And we covered a little bit about what's an RTOS, uh, how how is an RTOS different from your regular 
OS, right? So, uh, all right. So again, just just to recap, these are the components of IoT. Uh, today, in the hands-on part, we'll set up our cloud platform, we'll set up the communication, and we'll get a Python script, which would basically be our simulated device set up. As a bonus, I also have two devices uh, that Azure, uh, the Azure team was kind enough to kind of set it up. So basically, when you go to those pages, they have a Pi, uh, all you know, running in Fritzing, and then there is also a Dev Kit, which you on connecting to your cloud immediately start sending sensor data, which is super fun to watch, which is super fun to understand. So it's going to be a very short. Uh, it's going to be a nice and short and hands-on and super, super simple. Uh, I'll also walk you through setting up your VS code because uh, I've realized over, you know, when I was developing the content and the multiple ways you can go about it, VS code has some great integrations and some great extensions that they've already built as your team has already built and integrating it truly makes things very simple. All right, moving on. So uh, again, just an overview of what we covered and I'll skip this. All right, so the design template, right? So we spoke about, uh, you know, we tried to do an activity in which we kind of mapped out what a product makes a product. So we prioritized uh, the features and everything. Uh, so we're just going to look at a more streamlined version of it on a timeline basis, like how, what comes first basically. So let's let's look at the picture. All right. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see the picture clearly. Let me see. Okay. I think this should make it more visible. All right, so I just want you to kind of uh, understand what's going on here. I took it from this really, really nice uh, design website, which focuses on more of the design thinking uh, rather than uh, the technology part. So we have uh, Nuya here. Hi. <laughs> All right, so back when all the technical issues were going on, Nuya was the first one to come help me out while I was completely <laughs> freaking out. Of course, of course. So, Rithvi, turns out the issue was simply just uh, we have a cool baking cam by John Godfrey, the uh, co-founder, is uh, baking on the stream or prepping to bake for the, on the stream, which is why your stream got booted. And so we love technical issues, right? That's what that is. Yeah, I mean, but uh, I think people are super excited for your IoT um, workshop that's going on. And if you wanted to take a bit more time um into the workshop feel free to because i'm up next after your workshop so right 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 right, right. i was really worried about eating into the next person's time it's so all good. it's all good <laughs> great so oh uh, wait but i made sure that john finished streaming so is his broadcast just running <laughs> <laughs> so i think uh that was the issue but you're fine um just continue doing it on youtube um i think you'll be fine, this is recorded. So worst case, you could just share it with folks um, at the end um, and you can share the slides as well. Yep, yep, uh, I already have the repo ready. So you guys are all sorted on that front. Great, so I'm gonna let you be, I'm gonna let you do your workshop uh, because I know you prepared so hard for it and I know so many people are excited for it. So I'll let you run the workshop and I'll be out of here. Um, but yes, good luck with the workshop, okay with me? All right. All right. Okay, all right, everyone, pay attention to Professor Rithvi here because uh, she knows what she's talking about. She's a boss queen on uh, all things IoT. So I'm going to let her take it on. All right. Bye, Rithvi. Bye again. Thank you so much, Anuya, for uh, jumping in at the right time. All right, so I think the Twitch issue should get solved any time now because I just stopped the streaming that, that was happening here. So let me just quickly. Yep, we're good to go. All right, so uh, in 
in case you guys are now joining us from Twitch and you can finally see my stream. Uh, I'll, I'll cover it up in case you guys are missing out. Okay, let's just continue. So we were talking about design, uh, product design, right? So uh, this this image is supposed to help you understand the entire thing from more than just uh, you know technology point of view. So you see this first design research that happens, which we, we you know spoke about when we were discussing that for a problem, if we're making a wearable, you need to pay attention to the material science as well, right? The material that you're using, whether it's flexible, whether it's harmful to the person wearing it, or if it's it's for uh, specifically a night wearable, it has to be comfortable and completely, you know, uh, not not uh, something that you can be aware of that you're wearing it at all times. So uh, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, then there's user flow and research, which is basically what what event should follow what. Uh, then there is uh, testing, prototyping, UI development. So basically, if you if you look at this uh, lines that are following below it, right, which is develop use cases, develop user flows, uh, develop iframes. These are some very important parts that, that that are never spoken about on a tech level, especially since you're starting out. But if you do pay attention, attention to that, if you try and search for use cases, you will realize that uh, there's so much, there are so many more options that you can explore when you're making the product itself, rather than after deploying and realizing that, you know, a, a user could have it some other way. So uh, basically, uh, as an outline, what are the uh, you know how what do you make sure about when you're thinking about a, a project is basically what you're trying to accomplish right who who's going to use this uh, what will they do with it how do people experience the product and how we can improve the experience right so these are some basic uh, basic uh, guidelines for you to follow when you're uh, designing a product right or, or when you're thinking of a project you know then there are technical pointers, of course, that we've discussed at length, which is device parameters, material and use case abstraction, optimization priority, in which when we say optimization priority, it means, you know, whether whether you should uh, prioritize data optimization over power optimization, whether you should, uh, what does your product really, uh, what's the main feature and where do you want to, you know, spend all your resources that you have in the best way, basically, and not lose out on the sophistication or the accuracy of the product, right? Then there's sensor signals, basically, whether you can, if you can have a simpler sensor signal, and you can rather, so depending on your, you know, application, whether you want to kind of gather sensors, uh, whether you want a sophisticated sensor signal and do less processing on the hardware and just send the data received, or do you want a rather low level sensor and process the data that's coming on the microcontroller and then send it off. So this is another thing that you need to consider. And then in the end, of course, there's cost because uh, the more sophisticated the sensors you use, the cost will increase and then your product will lose a lot of its target audience at any point of time, right? So these are some nice technical pointers that are, that are good to you know keep in mind or mention if you're making a project or documenting a project especially, right? All right, so let's get started with the Azure setup. I see a lot more people have joined in finally. So I'm assuming my Twitch is finally working. So let's just check. All right, so uh, that means our uh, Twitch is working, which is great. <laughs> Yes, it's a relief. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who stepped in to help. All right. So uh, we're going to start with Azure setup. Uh, I need you guys to comment whether you guys have your Azure setup. Where do you need me to start helping you? Uh, I have started at a point where in case uh, you want to start with getting the student subscription. But if you want me to go a step back or a step further, we're good. Hi, Darshan. All right, so uh, 
in case you are just stepping in uh, we have a very cool quiz uh, lined up for everyone who's joining in so uh, let me know where you are at your is your setup from installing yeah yeah so we'll go over the installation don't worry about that you know what on that note i'll quickly share the repository so that just in case if there are any more technical issues we're we're covered so let's see there you go so if there are any more links that you need from my end do let me know and uh yeah we'll we'll find them together all right so if you go to the repository you will see that there are a lot there are tons of links mentioned i'll walk you through what is what so uh you can wait for me or you can start exploring i'm good either way and i'm happy to answer your questions as we go right so uh nr67 uh we're going to start right from setting up as well so let's come here if you guys are able to access this portal uh that this see, uh, seen on the screen let me increase the size okay so if you can access this that means that you have uh, at least logged in and signed up for an azure portal if you guys aren't here let me know i'll send you the link to get here as well i am looking at the chat uh, the live comments in case you do need it let me know otherwise i'm just going to wait for a minute for other people to confirm that they can see their portal Yep, I am sending you the link right now. Uh, this link should really help you with signing up. So I'm going to give you exactly a couple of minutes to figure out uh, what you're going to need to do uh, to get here. And then I'll uh, show you how to verify that you have a student subscription. Uh, so just let's let me give you a couple of more minutes and we should be good to go. Let me know if you guys have any trouble uh, signing up for Azure or you need help or uh, otherwise finding the portal link and I'll be happy to help you. All right, so uh, let me just walk you through how you'll verify whether or not uh, you have a uh, the right subscription or rather uh, any particular kind of subscription will work at this point. So let's see, share screen. All right, so uh, uh, let's see. This is my portal and how am I going to verify that I have a subscription is basically I'll go to subscriptions and uh, I'll check if I have subscriptions. So here I have two subscriptions, which is Azure for students and Azure for students starter. Uh, and of course, I'm the account admin for both and both the subscriptions are active. So these are some statuses that you want to check in case uh, these aren't available or uh, you don't see any subscriptions. What you want to do is you want to click on add. And once you click on add, it's going to check all the offers available to you or, uh, you know, generally available and you can click on whatever works for you in case uh, you do not get as your for students or if your as your for students is taking time you can just select the free trial uh, the free trial is not available to me because i'm already using as your for students uh, but yeah once you see this once you come here and you click on select offer it should take you to a new tab 
and ask you to basically fill up a verification form which will confirm whether or not you're a student all right so there you go this is where you'll come you can click on start free and uh, you should be good to go from here so this is the first step right next what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up our iot hub so uh, let me know once you're here and we'll move forward Right, so the verification might take a bit of a time. Uh, do you have access to the GitHub Education Pack, the de uh, Developer Education Pack? Let me see if I can find you a link. I think this is the link. Uh, when you go on this link, it should be able to. It should uh, let you uh, access Azure through GitHub. Awesome. So since you have the uh, GitHub education, you can just link your GitHub to uh, Azure and you should be good to go. It might take a bit for it to verify, but I do suggest if you have a student uh, a college ID, use a college ID. That's much better. Sure, let me share the link with you. There you go. That's all right. If your school, uh, if your college does not have a college email ID, it's okay. Just use the GitHub developer pack. Uh, it might take a bit. If it's taking longer, then you can just go for the free trial version. So let me know if you need any more help signing up. Otherwise, I'll quickly walk you through what we're going to be working with today. So uh, what we're going to be working with is the IoT Hub. So how are you going to go about uh, creating a hub? Uh, because I've used Hub recently, I can see it here. But in case you don't see it here, what you need to do is you want to go into create a resource. Uh, and over here, you can just search for IoT Hub. And it should there you go and you can just click on create here and i don't think it's going to let me create one but uh, because i already have one and there's a restriction to the number but let's see if it does so, local hack a build 2022 and i'm going to see if there's a closer region available to me which is usually South India. So I'm going to go for that. And uh, I'm going to stop here because this is kind of an important step uh, for what we're doing. So let me know if you guys are following along, if you need some help in getting set up, in getting the IoT Hub set up. All right, so uh, I don't see any comments. Uh, now, if you are following along, let me know if you uh, want me to repeat a step. We're a smaller group, so we can we can totally cater to where you're at. And yeah, so uh, I'm going to continue doing this. Uh, let me know if you want me to show the, the step again. Okay. So uh, what we're doing is we're creating an IoT Hub. How we did that was we went into create a resource. We searched for IoT Hub in the search bar and we clicked on create. All right. Once we clicked on create, we're using... Uh, one of our subscriptions. So uh, the thing is, if you do have both the subscriptions like I do, this does not let you create an IoT Hub. So it's bet best to stick to Azure for students. I already have a resource group created, but in case you're not sure how to do that, you can always create a new one and I'll just go LHD. And there you go. So that's just a new resource hub that we've created. And uh, that's it. So we're going to click on review plus create. And uh, it should do the job of choosing the rest of the things. 
right? So these are some things that it's mentioning. You don't have to uh, bother much about it because anyway, for your first trial, you have lots of credits. But yes, so once you're done using it, it's a good idea to come and, you know, kind of uh, stop it. Otherwise, you can see there are costs per month and they do get uh, charged, right? So let's click on create. All right, so we have an IoT Hub being created. Let's go back and see if we can see that. So let's go to IoT Hub. And I don't see an IoT Hub here, so let's see what's happening. Did it not create? I think it did. I think it's creating the resource, right? So the resource is being created. Once the resource is created, it will deploy the IoT Hub. So let's just wait uh, in the home region for the resource to show up. Until then, I'm going to take a quick pulse check with you guys. Do you guys need any help with the resource? I'll take that as a no. Okay, so we're just going to wait for the resource here for the deployment to complete. And yeah, until then, if there are any questions regarding this session or the past session, feel free to ask them now. So the deployment usually, uh, that's a great question. So the deployment really depends on the resources that you have chosen. So I think the first resource group that's running here, it's in a different region from what I've chosen. It, it you know, An average time would be around five minutes for any cloud for that matter, even if you use any other cloud from Elastic to uh, AWS, uh, they all take around five to six minutes. Uh, it can take longer or slower depending on the server that you're using. Uh, I'm just trying to look for this one and see even this is South India. So I think it should take that around, around the same time. Uh, let's see. Let's wait. So it's been three minutes. I think a couple of more minutes and we should be good to go. Uh, Nyar, uh, you couldn't sign up. What was the error that it threw? When, you, when it said it couldn't sign up. So did it throw an error that you can't be verified or did it ask, uh, or did it say that it would take some time to verify? There we go. So the deployment's complete. And now we can go to the resource and we've already create, created an IoT hub at that point so we can see we're already at our iot hub so this is our hub created this is the name of our hub and this is basically the telemetry overview about uh, how many devices have been connected this is your daily message quota that comes under the uh, basic plan that the standard plan that you've taken we've chosen and these are some other details that might be useful later if you're using vs code to uh, get connected right and you can see there's a json view because uh, if you're trying to connect it in a particular way sometimes you need these uh, information in a certain format right so uh, all right so we have our uh, hub created now let's create a device all right so let's go into devices all right so before we start creating a device 
All right. Let's see why it's not. Let's get nice. All right. So I think the IoT hub is still getting deployed or... All right, let's see what's wrong. All right, uh, I am going to let this resource kind of refresh and uh, figure out why it's not working for a minute. Until then, I'll show you how the process of creating a device works. And then we'll come back to this and try and create again. Okay, so this is another IoT hub that I've created that I worked with earlier. So there's already one device created here. And there's an overview activity because I've been using it earlier. But what I'm going to do here is what we need to do is we're going to create a new device, right? So we're going to do, go for add a device. The process is going to remain the same regardless of uh, uh, which resource you're using, which resource group you're using, or which hub you're using. Uh, so in in the verification process, the student verification process, Nyan, you should get a, a drop-down menu which uh, gives you an option to uh sign up with your github that's where you should be able to find uh your uh github developer pack and uh chain it or if you go to the link that i sent from there if you try to connect to azure it should ask you to sign up with the same email id that you use for github does that make sense uh let me know if you still need help all right all right okay so we're gonna go ahead and create the device let it be our simulation device Let's put one to it so that we have some kind of a reference number. All right. Uh, the rest of uh, the things you let them remain, you let uh, the settings remain the same. Uh, authentication type we want a symmetric key because we'll be using that to get our uh, VS Code connected. We also want them to auto generate keys. So if you go here, it's basically it basically means that you won't have to go and generate keys every time you do an operation. It will have a list of generated keys available. And oh uh, yeah, so there's no parent device. Basically, we don't have a mesh network and we don't want a device to always have to communicate over another device. So this is an independent device and that's what we're creating here, right? I'm gonna hit save and we're good to go. So we, you can see, uh, we have a simulation device created and we're gonna click on this and see the structure here. So uh, this is where you're going to find all the keys to get connected over here, all right? Uh, it's kind of important to always remember how you get there, get here. Uh, a couple of nice things to note here is first the message to device. This is a direct message to device uh, function available. So in case you are testing it for the first time, you can and you have an actual device running, you can have a serial printer running, and you can just check if your cloud is connected through this very nice method that I've provided. All right, so. Uh, manage keys is again to kind of gen regenerate your keys if you know for some reason uh, you lost these keys when i say lost these keys i mean you ended up publishing it on github by mistake and you want to change the keys or uh, things like that all right so uh, let's uh, go out and see if our original resource that we created for this works if not we'll have to figure out what's wrong and Yeah, there we go. So this is working. So I guess that was it. The deployment had completed, but the hub was still loading. So let's go here, create a device here as well. Let's call this simulation device 2. So that we know 2 is the one that's associated with the resource that we created here. All right. So now let's stick to uh, this console only since it's been created specifically for today's uh, event. All right, so uh, now we have a device ready. Uh, the next thing you want to know and you want to be very comfortable accessing is the shared access policies. So this this is how you give it. These are the different uh, categories of access available. So uh, when you're connecting your VS code, when you're connecting uh, even your uh, 
connection string for your code. These are the different types of permissions that you can or cannot give to your uh, device, uh, to your uh, platform that you want to access your uh, hub from right so uh, what we will be doing today is we're going to be giving the entire owner uh, right to our vs code so that we can query all these things we can query the services if they are running we can query devices we can read and we can regularly write so we're going to give all these permissions through this all right great so uh, i'm going to take a pause here because we're going to go on to uh, the Next part, which is setting up VS Code. So is there anyone who's facing trouble till here? Following along. All right, so... Uh, Let's move on. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, set up your VS Code. Before we set up VS Code, I want you guys to, uh, because I don't use Python directly on my computer, I use virtual environments to run Py uh, my uh, Python. And I really like it. I always advise people who are new to, uh, especially IoT, because there are some, uh, because you end up installing your dependencies if you're following different tutorials. And there are chances that it breaks other dependencies or, you know, breaks other projects or you end up updating or degrading uh, in one of the dependencies in your project entirely fails. So uh, what I like to use is an Anaconda, Anaconda Navigator. Navigator, I'm sorry. So, an Anaconda Navigator, let me show you where. Okay. So, I think I showed it, showed this in the last session as well. And, oh, okay. All right. So, this is the Anaconda Navigator. And uh, I absolutely love using this, especially for my Python projects is because multiple times I've had to, you know, use some older, older libraries to complete my project or, you know, actually make it work. Uh, an example of that would be uh, test CV. What I was trying to do here was I was trying to use a tkinter library along with a CSV file. And there was a put, there was a error uh, regarding compatibility of the latest uh, dependency. So I had to kind of use a lower level dependency to make the entire project work. And that way, when I used an environment, uh, I didn't have to uh, worry about any other uh, application of mine breaking, right? So if you see, I use it for my different hackathons, I use it for my different uh, contract jobs if I do any. And yeah, I, I basically really, really advocate for using Anaconda. And uh, how do you how do you really use Anaconda? So basically, what you do is you first create an environment. So this can be anything. Uh, I've already created an LHD build, but uh, just to show you, it'll be LHD. And over here, I'll choose the Python version. I'm okay with using the latest version. So I just make this and I click Create. And uh, it might take a couple of uh, minutes to kind of really set up, but that's okay because what it does is it, it creates an entire new uh, environment and it sets up all your dependencies that are used anywhere. Uh, okay, all right. So while this creates, uh, let me show you how you access it on your VS Code. So when you go to your VS Code, you can go into extensions and you can search for uh, Python and it will show you uh so let me show you this one right so there's this and if you see here uh it's showing me uh, a particular uh environment so because i've added anaconda to the path it can already always detect my uh environment uh, and i can choose which uh environment i want to use right so right now i'm using local hack table which i will dedicate it for this particular project so whatever whatever dependencies i install stay uh constrained to this uh this environment only right uh another uh so before we move on let's just finish off anaconda so it's still creating it takes a while to create which is okay we're not in a rush All right, so I think it's getting there, but until then, let's move on to VS Code. So 
yeah so for vs code once you are in vs code you need a couple of inst uh, ex uh, extensions that we're going to be using so uh, of course python is one of them uh, more than that you need uh, azure so before you go on to azure uh, IoT, you want to first Azure, uh, install some basic Azure uh, things like the Azure account, which is important for you to use any other Azure extension. So you're going to first use Azure account. And after that, you should be fine. After that, if you just search for Azure IoT Hub, it will install all the IoT devices that you, all the uh, IoT extensions that you need. All right. So I think this is the one that you want. And once you install this, you should be good to go. Right. Uh, I already have everything installed. And once you install Azure extensions, this is how it will pop up and you can decide which ones do you want. So I have all these extensions installed uh, because I think I went ahead and uh, there's a suite that you can install in which everything gets installed. So you can just look for that and go ahead or just use uh, IoT Hub. That, that's, that works too. Right. So uh, that's your basically iot setup and your python setup you just need these are pretty simple setups uh, it won't take much for you to do that and you should be good to go all right so there we go there it has set up this environment for me and uh, you can see these are some basic things that it's installed uh now i can decide whether i want to keep it this way or i want to remove certain things or install in either in any other package right uh so as soon as you uh, do this, you can open the terminal through here and you can see it will open. You see this, it's already opened in an environment, in a virtual environment. So it really makes your life very easy. So right now we're using this uh, because, uh, or you know what, let's just continue here. That way there'll be no pre-installations. I can keep up with your errors. So we'll just use LHD that I've just recently created. And again, we'll wait for it to switch until then. All right, so uh, now you know how to get your VS Code set up. You know the extensions you need for your VS Code set up. And you definitely know why I'm using Anaconda. So I really, again, I really like using it because I tend to uh, screw my dependencies around a lot because I'm trying multiple things at a time. Uh, especially if you're working on a web development project that uses Python, there is a high chance uh, you want your dependencies to be safe and contained to a particular environment. All right, so I'm going to take a quick pulse check and see if anyone's following along and they need any help. Otherwise, I'll just show you how to get connected to the cloud and introduce you a couple of awesome resources that can help you with hardware simulation. And they're basically uh, already simulated devices. So you just need to go get them connected to your cloud and you can really, you know, then it's just your playground. Awesome, Naira. So uh, we have one person who signed up. That's great. So uh, Naira, after you have signed up, do you want me to walk you through again? How do you find a subscription? Or are you good to go? It's okay. I mean, if you want me to wait for a couple of minutes, I don't mind doing that. Okay, I'll show you. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to show uh, what we need to do to get a subscription. OK, so this is uh, where you must be once you have signed in. Let's just see if there's a notification. Okay. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go into subscriptions and check if you have an active subscription, right? Uh, you should have an active subscription uh, here. If you do not, then it might be a problem because you won't be able to create any resources. So make sure you have an active uh, subscription. Uh, as you offer students is good enough. As you offer students starter is like the lower level subscription. So it does not that you create a lot of resources. But as you offer students should do just fine. Uh, let me see if you are with me. Now, as soon as you find a subscription, let me know. So I'll again walk you through to create creating a resource and you should be good to go. Awesome. You have as a, uh, as a lot of students. So you are on the same page and we will just walk through creating a resource. I've already created one resource. So you just need to click the buttons that I won't be clicking this time. Right. Uh, okay. So you want to go back to home. Okay, uh, you see IoT Hub here. Uh, if it's not listed here, that's okay. You can either go to create a resource or you can go into more services. Uh, you can just filter services and click IoT Hub. Uh, type in IoT Hub right here and it should pop up. 
once you click on iot hub you should be able to create it right here in case you do not have any uh, uh, hubs created it should tell you but creating the hub again is a very simple process and you want to select as your for students then you want to uh, choose a resource group in case you do not have a resource group you can just create a new one uh, let's say build 2022 and you can enter a name for your hub which in this case can be lhd and you can select the region that is closest to you for me it's south india so i select south india but whatever regions closest to you you select that and uh, you hit review plus create and that's it you should be good to go i'm gonna wait another minute for you to catch up and then we'll set you up with vs code as well Alright, so the reason why I said VS Code is much easier and much nicer to use is because I really, really like how seamlessly they've integrated everything here. So if you see, once I open Azure IoT Hub here, I can query my devices, I can access everything that I access on my Azure dashboard right here. So I don't need to go back to the dashboard again and again to check, except, you know, if I want to check... Uh, whether there has been some kind of a telemetry. Otherwise, it just works out of the box right here. Even if I don't want to open the dashboard to check telemetry, I can just click here and click on start monitoring. And it will monitor if there is any any uh, device uh, messages sent or uh, device messages received, which is pretty cool uh, because it really, really makes your job uh, very easy. You can stay in one window and control everything. I just realized that I hadn't shared my uh, screen of VS Code, so I'll just do that again. Awesome! Naira has created the IoT Hub. So what you want to do after you've created the Hub uh, is you want to create a device. So let me show you how you do that. Alright, so once you have your Hub created, you can go into your Hub, which is... Where is my Hub? There you go. So uh, once you go in your Hub, you can look at your resource so for me the one that i created right now is local hack day build 2022 once i click here i see a lot of things right this is my overview which is telling me that i haven't used any kind of uh, messages today so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into devices and i'm going to create a device all right so uh, you want to do a uh, add device and you just put a name for here we can put lhd1 and you just hit create uh hit save that's all you need to do there's no other settings that you need to work with let me know if you're following along and we'll go at your pace So, right, I was talking about VS Code and uh, what message shows up? Uh, yeah, so that's because that happened with me too right now because it's still creating the hub. Give it like another two, three minutes and once when, when you try again, it should be good to go. All right. So I'll just walk you through... Uh, my vs code until then so so i was talking about why i like the vs code extension you can see over here it seamlessly it, it's integrated everything that i have on my cloud dashboard on my vs code so uh, from monitoring the messages that are coming and going to my devices or anything that that's deployed on my devices can be all uh, you know uh, tagged here so from you know the tracing of what's the data that's coming and going to my endpoints to my event hubs even uh just just in case you are not aware event 
hubs are basically the action that happens after uh, your uh, data is received. So when you uh, configure your project to do a particular action after the data has been uh, received. So yeah, so I really like the VS Code uh, extension. You can query a lot of things. Uh, so I was just saying that from this monitoring, you can monitor everything that happens. You can send messages to the cloud from here and you can also receive messages from the cloud here, right? So Naira, could you create the device now? I think another minute and you should be able to create it. So what we're going to do now is uh, if you don't have your uh, VS Code set up, that's okay. You can take your time to get it set up. It's a very simple process after that. So uh, we're going to uh, set up uh, the VS Code right from scratch. So I showed you the extensions and then we're going to see what are the different commands that you need to follow to get connected to the cloud. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, I'll be... Uh, doing all the steps in front of you so you can follow along in even if your vs code isn't set up we won't be using vs code first we'll be using a normal command line uh, interface i do need you guys to have git set up just give me a confirmation if you have git installed on your laptop if not we'll do it in a way that you don't need git And it's okay if you don't have Anaconda, uh, you can set it up later. You, you're fine to follow it with a Python installed in your laptop and you have if you have a command line. All right, so uh, I'm going to move on uh, with the command line uh, instructions that we're going to be using. So let me know if you guys are following along, if you guys have some trouble following. All right, so I'm going to share. Stop screen. Share screen. Right. So this is my... Uh, Windows and uh, I last used uh, your git to commit to the documentation that I have given you guys access to. If you guys need the link to this documentation again, it has all the PowerPoint presentations that we've used till now. It has all the links that you need from your student, as you are for students, uh, where to download Anaconda, how to set up what we're going to be setting up today. Great job, Naira. So you're on this, uh, Naira. So you're on the same same page as I am. And uh, just let me know, Naira, if you have a VS Code set up by any chance. If not, that's okay. We will follow the normal command line way. Anyway, before we go move on to the uh, awesome. So uh, I'll definitely show the VS Code way since you have VS Code set up, but let's follow the command line way first. So uh, let me share my screen. Oh. Okay. Right. So uh, you can see this is the environment that I've created. All right. And great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by creating a folder first for uh, the project that I'll be doing. So I'm going to do IMKDIR. In case you don't know uh, command line uh, uh, instructions, that's okay. Uh, I'm doing the entire thing in front of you so you guys can just follow along. Right? So MKDIR, your fold, MKDIR is make directory and you'll put your folder name, which in the, our case can be IOT at LHD. Okay, so that's our folder name. Then we're going to cd into it. That is, we're going to change our directory into it. That's IOT. At okay. All right, so now we're in our directory. So anything we do now is going to, first of all, the Python thing is contained in this uh, environment, right, which is uh, here. And uh, anything else uh, that we do, we install or we download is going to be contained here, okay, in this folder that we just created. All right. Uh, great. So let's start with... Uh, 
what we're going to be doing next right so what we're now going to do is we're going to install some azure uh, packages from pip so uh, i'm going to be doing it here if you want me to put it in the chat what we're following let me know uh, i'll put it so that it's easier for you guys to follow along all right Alright, I'm just waiting for a pulse check for you guys to tell me if you want me to send the commands in the uh, chat or not. Alright, let me know. Okay. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to clone the SDK which exists for uh, Python. All right, so I'm putting into the chat as well uh, the command that you will be following. And then I'll, of course, do it on my, uh, right? So this is the command that we're following. Uh, I put it in the chat. It should be easy for you to follow now, okay? So we're going to clone the IoT SDK for Python. All right, there you go. And while it clones, uh, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to now install the packages that I mentioned earlier. So uh, Okay, what we want to do next is this is the command that you want to follow in next. All right, so once you do this, it should tell me. So for me, I think it's already installed. For you, it might take a little longer to install, which is fine. Uh, I'll repeat a step in case you miss it. Okay. All right, so next what you want to do is uh, you want to CD into a certain uh, folder. So we just downloaded the SDK, right? So when you do a DIR, you'll be able to see that in your directory. There is one another folder called Azure IoT SDK, all right? So uh, you want to CD into that, okay? Once you change your directory into that, uh, you want to go into Azure uh, device, okay? IoT device. Then just go do a DIR and see where you are and you'll see the samples uh, folder. So you want to DIR into that, uh, CD into that as well. So CD samples. All right. Again, do a DIR to see what you have here. What you want to do is you want to go into PNP. All right. So CD, PNP. And this is where you'll stop. So this is the folder that we'll be working in and where we'll be uh, running uh, all the different commands. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. But uh, I kind of joined the stream late. Uh, so I've spoken to Anuya and she'll be coming on a tad bit later. So let me just show you how to uh, get connected to the cloud once. And then you can reach out to me on Discord about uh, any questions. Great. So uh, is uh, Nyar at the same step? Nyar, do you need some help? with it sure sure so what command do you want to see again Nyar? uh which command do you need so the first thing we did was we cloned it and i've put all the commands in the chat in case you want to uh right the mkdr one okay so what we did was initially we, so MKDIR literally means make directory, right? And this is the name of the directory. This can be anything that you want. Yeah, so this can be anything that you want, basically. So uh, I've put IoT at LHT as my folder name. So this makes the folder. Then when you do a CD IoT at LHT, what it's doing is it's changing the directory. That is what CD stands for into IoT at LHT, all right? So that's the folder that you just created, right? Uh, in case you're new to the command line, if uh, you uh, type a couple of letters and uh, press tab, it will complete the line. So that will make your process faster. All right. Uh, next, what we have done is uh, we have cloned this uh, repository into our uh, system. 
uh, this is a nice Git concept. So if you want to learn more, you can definitely check out the GitHub docs or MLH runs a GitHub workshop quite often. So you can join one of them. All right. Let me know if uh, you're following along or you need me to repeat something. Yeah, it's not just HTTPS. You need to put git clone. Uh, you need to put this entire thing. And it's right here. Let me, this one. Did you put git clone? Don't just put the repository uh, link. You want to put git clone and then move ahead. All right, so uh, what we're going to do next is basically we're going to connect uh, the stream uh, to uh, this code basically to our cloud. And it's a very simple step. It won't take more than a couple of minutes if you have uh, followed along till here. Right, so if Git is not recognized, that means you don't have Git installed. Let me send you a Git download link. Uh, what OS are you using, Nyar? Are you using a Windows, Mac, or a Linux? Perfect, so this should help you get set up, all right? So uh, this will value, this is where you will find Git uh, installation and uh, you should be able to follow along. So what I'm going to do now Nyan, is I'm going to follow all the steps so that uh, you guys have access to the recording after I'm done and you guys can follow along there. All right, so I'm going to quickly walk you through what we're going to do next. All right, so now we're here, right? We're in this uh, folder, right? So make sure that you're in the right folder. What we did was we cloned this entire repository and then we uh, changed our directory into this folder, all right? And in this folder, we'll be using uh, the simple thermostat example to get connected to the uh, uh, cloud, all right? So what we're going to do next is basically we're going to set our connection string, all right? So let me show you, right? So we're going to set our connection string. What that basically means is we're going to set our environment uh, variable. We're going to set uh, what is an environment variable is something you should definitely look into. Environment variables are basically if you have these strings, right? Like your connection string, you can set it in your command prompt. And every time you call that variable, it will uh, give you that string. It's like any other variable. Uh, in your code that you use, but what it does is uh, for your environment, it sets that variable and anytime that you use it in your code or in your uh, uh, program, it can just reference to that, All right? But uh, it does get reset uh, every time you close your command prompt or in, in case of Linux, your terminal. So you have to set it again every time you're opening uh, your command prompt. For Linux, I do know that if you go into bash and change it, uh, you can, uh, you don't have to set it over and over again, but uh, I have never really tried with Windows yet. So in case I do find a way, I'll, I'll get back to you. All right, so uh, great. We're going to be setting our connection string here. So let me stop sharing this and share my Azure uh, portal again and show you where to find the string, okay? This connection string is basically your uh, device connection string, okay? So let's go here. And here, and let's go to our IoT Hub. Then let's select our device and go into devices. And here you will find uh, our device. And basically, what you want is once you click here, you will uh, you want the primary connection string. Okay. 
So I'm going to click on copy just to make sure we're on the right row. Right, we're going to click on copy. And this is the connection string that you'll be setting in your command prompt. All right. Uh, give me one second and yeah, we're good to go. All right, so uh, we're going to remove this and we're going to put our uh, connection string here. All right, so there you go. Um, right. there we go so uh, i've set my connection string over here and what i'm going to do next is i am going to set the variable which is going to be reference to this uh environment variable which is something like this all right so my iot device security type is my connection string so this variable will reference this and this will reference this all right so there we go this is how simple it is and now what you have done at this point is basically set your foundation to get connected to the uh, cloud after this uh, you will be able to get connected to your cloud at the next instant right so what we're going to do next is basically we're going to just run uh, our uh, program and Let's see if it works, right? So let's go here and we're gonna do a pin. And if it does not get connected and throws an error, uh, we'll see uh, how it can. And it's connected. So it is already sending message. Uh, we can press Q to quit. And so this is the point where you'll have to check your cloud, whether or not you're receiving the messages. We'll do that in a bit. Uh, because if it's not throwing an error here, that means it's connected to your cloud. Otherwise, it would have thrown an error here. All right. So let me quickly walk you through how you get connected on VS Code as well. So that you guys have multiple options to do it when you sit down to do it. Uh, VS Code. All right. So for VS Code, what you want to do is basically, uh, the reason I want to walk you through this entire process once is because you need to first enter your iot hub owner connection string and then you want to go into uh, your device so let me share my window instead let's go let's go share all right there we go so this is our vs code so you can see one hub of mine is already uh, connected but i don't want this hub i mean i have this connected but i want my other hub connected as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open my command palette which is basically which is basically uh it might be different the shortcut might be different for you so in that case you can always uh look it up in your uh settings right for me it's a ctl shift p so this is what gives me the command palette. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Azure IoT Hub, select IoT Hub, right? So uh, this might not be at the top for you. In that case, you can just type Azure IoT and it will list all the Azure IoT commands. And we just need to click on select IoT Hub, right? Now it will uh, ask you which uh, subscription and there you choose this. And it's showing you two hubs and there you go, local happy. And that's it. You are connected to your uh, local hack day and your device has been queried. And at this point, you can just uh, connect it to the device uh, any way you want, right? So you can just start sending a uh, device to cloud messages uh, like this, right? This is how simple it is. At this point, you can just send a... Uh, you want to send devices so this is devices too you can decide how many uh messages you want to send at what interval you want to send and you can just send it and it's sent two messages successfully and all the messages are sent successfully right so uh this is a very nice way to get connected like i said this is a very seamless way to use as your iot hub it gets connected very simply and uh, it's quite easy to use all right, we're very near what I wanted to cover with you guys today. So one last thing we're going to cover. It's the coolest thing, I promise, uh, because this is going to make your life very easy in terms of getting connected to the cloud. So let's say you do not have command line. Let's say you do not have VS Code. And this should do the trick of getting you connected wherever you want. Right. So let me quickly share my screen.
All right, so there's something called the dev kit simulator and then there's something called the Raspberry Pi simulator. All right, so I'm going to drop the links uh, for them in the chat as well. But uh, they're there in the repository that I shared earlier on. So I'll just see if I can share the screen again. All right, so you see this uh, GitHub repo. It has all the links uh, to uh, what I'm showing right now. So these two simulators will really change uh, your entire dynamic of with IoT because you're going to skip all the tedious setup that I just walked you through, even though I completely recommend you doing it. Once you do set up your VS Code, it's like very seamless uh, in you know interacting with the cloud, not just on the IoT front, but also when it comes to deploying other things like a static web app. All right. So uh, share, 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 share. Uh, all right. How cool is this? If you go to this link, all you need to do is uh, you see uh, your connection string here. All you need to do is add your uh, device ID. And uh, once you add your device ID, uh, your connection string that we used earlier, you are all set to go. So let me show you, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, share my... I'll just go copy my device ID the same way I did earlier, right? The primary connection string that is, all right? And I'm going to select this thing. Okay. Oh, so my connection string here becomes this. And all I need to do here is click on run. And what's it, what it's going to do is it's going to send the message. And every time the message is sent successfully, it's going to make the LED blink. All right? All right, so it's not getting connected. Let's see why. Let me paste the link again. All right, let me refresh this page and try again. All right, let's run this. Yep, so we can see the LED is blinking. That means the message is being sent successfully. And it's gone into invalid state again. All right, but uh, see, the thing is, uh, the problem is not with sending to the cloud. If you see the uh, error closely, the problem is with reading the sensor data, which I think in the process of pasting the link, I have messed it up. So in any case, when you go to this uh, link, you should just be able to uh, get your connection string set up. All right. Another cool link that I'm going to show you right now is... Uh, connecting an entire dev kit, which again is simulated for you beforehand. There you go. So uh, this is a much nicer code in case of, you know, it's broken down. You'll understand what's happening here. Uh, I can give you a rundown if you want later, but basically what it's doing is it has these sensors connected on the kit. So this is called the dev kit and it's just sending uh, every time you press the button, it's going to shake and send the, send the sensor data to uh, the cloud. So I already have my connection string pasted. Again, it's the same device ID that I just copied. I'll show it once again uh, from where I'm getting it. And all you need to do is hit run. And it's connecting to IoT Hub. Now it's connected. This means it's showing an IP, which means it's, which means it's connected. And you need to just press this. And it's going to shake. And basically, send, it's sending the data continuously to your cloud. All right. So I'm going to press stop and let Anuya know that we're ready to let her <laughs> come on. I'm so glad you think so. I honestly wish I could have given you a more detailed rundown, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll catch up later. Uh, you guys can uh, hit me up on, uh, sorry. Where is my slide? Okay, sorry, again. All right, so you guys can hit me up on any of my social media channels, which is here. Uh, I'm happy to give you a rundown of what we really did today in case it was too fast. You, of course, are going to have access to this recording. So if there is any step that's not clear or you missed, you can always 
watch it again and again until you get it uh, again i have mentioned every resource that i have used to get to this point in the repository so it should be easy to follow and what i am planning to do is uh, deploy a static web app with all the instructions on the same repository so it should be a piece of cake you know cake walk for all of you all right thank you so much for joining in i know it was again very rough yeah to get started but i'm so glad all of you could make it and yeah let me know if you have any questions um regarding anything we did so i'm gonna stop sharing and all right uh, i'm gonna let anuya take over i'm gonna end the broadcast and she'll be up in i think less than five minutes so thank you again bye bye